Thank you very much for the opportunity to present. So I was asked uh, to talk about Profonda and um, common femoral interventions. Nothing to disclose as, as it relates to this specific talk. So this is basically what we're talking about. Um, a very complex, difficult lesion, and the question is, is there anything endovascularly that we can offer to a patient like this, or should they all be uh, surgically repaired? I think there are a few facts that are important to remember. The common femoral is the most common access uh, for diagnostic and interventional procedures, certainly a site that we want to preserve for future interventions. Uh, usually those patients, when they present with this type of anatomy, they have significant symptoms, whether it's severe claudication and or critical ischemia. Uh, they may be a complicated feature for those patients that have uh, below the inguinal ligament bypass. And usually there is tandem lesions down in the SFA and or proximally in the iliac system. The other thing to consider is the iatrogenic presentation in those patients that had undergone prior interventions and they have closure device use, as well as the presence of uh, pseudoaneurysms, dissections, fistulas in, the, in that specific setting. I think that for the most part, uh, this is a traditionally surgical uh, procedure. In other words, uh, a common femoral endarterectomy plus patch angioplasty has been uh, the traditional way to fix these lesions. And unless there is a compelling uh, reason not to do so, uh, I think that it will continue to be the, uh, the standard of care. Uh, the uh, success rate with that surgical intervention is pretty high. The post-operative morbid mortality is relatively low, especially if the patient is not significantly obese and there's not a lot of panels to deal with. And the five-year patency is quite uh, good. Having said that, endo often becomes uh, an option in those patients in which cannot undergo surgical for whatever reason, whether it's the comorbidities that the patient presents or whether uh, it's certain anatomic features, i.e. Uh, large patients. When we're going to do the, uh, an intervention, we want to consider a lot of things. First of all, access options, whether you're going to use a contralateral or you're going to use an arm access, uh, especially radial and or brachial. When you do decide the axis, then you gotta come up with your strategy of therapy, whether you're gonna do just plain balloon angioplasty, I think that this will be changed when the drug eluting balloons become available. The utilization of atherectomy and which atherectomy to use, especially as it relates uh, to the luminal gain that you want. Whether you're gonna stent or not, and what type of a stent you're gonna use, and if you're gonna stent, are you gonna do kissing stents or not? And uh, lastly, there are certain cases in which a hybrid uh, intervention may be of relevance, i.e. a patient that will require a common femoral endarterectomy plus uh, a FEMPOP or uh, uh, an endarterectomy and then a SFA stent. So the hybrid, the hybrid approach is an important option. Is there any data to support this, uh, the use of endovascular for the common femoral and the profonda? So the first thing that I would say is that there's no randomized controlled clinical trials that would support this. Uh, so we don't have that level of evidence. Uh, and many of the interventions that are being done now are basically single center uh, registries. So I pulled some of them, and they date back to 2004. And then, as you can see, the number of procedures is not necessarily high, except for the last one that I will discuss in a second. The success rate, however, in the hands of an experienced operator is quite high. The complication rate tend to be low if you know what you're doing in terms of combining your different modalities of therapy and there is a significant uh, improvement in clinical symptoms as shown uh, in this table. So from this, there seems to be a rational for using it, especially in the hands of uh, high volume operators. One thing that I want to always bring uh, to your attention is that there are limitations when you do pursue this uh, pathway. If you're going to stand, the rate of stem fracture is high. Probably the rate of instantary stenosis, especially as it relates to the bifurcation, may be high. One of the few studies that started uh, to generate attention was this. is a large series with over uh, 300 patients um, treated common femoral. Uh, they did have some inflow as well as outflow disease. The important thing that I wanted to mention here is that the success rate was quite high, and the real stenosis rate was 28, 20% uh, respectively based on the, uh, the TBR as well. So. 
some data trying to show that there is effectiveness associated with endo intervention with a relatively low risk stenosis rate for those patients in which the surgical option is prohibited. So this is the case that I just showed you. Significantly, this is common femoral. Atherectomy was done followed by angioplasty, an okay result what you're trying to reestablish flow in someone who has critical ischemia and otherwise is not a surgical candidate. This is another example in which a patient presents with diffusely uh, disease iliofemoral system. You see multiple lesions in the iliac and as well as in the common femoral. Uh, the patient receives an uh, endo of the iliac system, followed by atherectomy in that common femoral, followed by angioplasty, with a good result in an effort, again, to uh, reestablish influence someone that presents with critical ischemia, and you are not compromising the profonda at all. So the data, more data came out, and uh, this is from the Leipzig group. I think this is perhaps the largest study, and it's worthwhile looking at it. 466 patients that presented with common femoral disease. They performed about 500 interventions in those. Th some of those were excluded. Uh, the patients that were included in the study were about 321. That represented about 360 interventions. This represents a very small number of the total interventions they do on a yearly basis. That year, they perform about 11,000 endovascular interventions. This is uh, the anatomy. Uh, about 20% uh, were uh, common femoral total occlusions. And many of them were bifurcation. They used the Medina classification for uh, the bifurcation, which is uh, extrapolation from the coronary literature. Some of them were uh, post endarterectomy, believe it or not, and most of them were associated with other disease in another location. When you look at the type of interventions that they perform, many of them uh, had uh, the need for associated interventions, including in the iliac and or the SFA. The strategies that they use, most of them require angioplasty, as you would expect. The need of a stent uh, was uh, there, and the threshold for doing so was basically based on the presence of flow limiting stenosis, or dissection rather. And uh, there was a significant use of a joint therapy, specifically a therectomy, and the Silverhawk device seemed to be the one that was uh, favored the most. This is what I was talking about, the Medina classification in terms to, the, to classify further the bifurcation, the location of the lesion, and how that predicts real stenosis, and I'll show you that in a second. The feature or characteristics of the patient, many of them had the typical comorbidities. Most of them had um, uh, claudication and or rest pain. The lesion characteristics uh, is sh are shown here. The one thing that I want to show you is how significantly diseased those common femorals were, including the presence of CTOs. So they were not simple, straightforward cases by any means. And here, uh, the procedures that were performed, most of them require PTA as the... Um, uh, therapy of choice, but in the cases where there are flow limit and dissections and that impair the flow either into the profunda and or the SFA, a stenting was used. The type of stent was not necessarily described in the study. Most of them were self-spandable stent. I think that with the introduction of Supera makes it a very uh, ideal stent to place in this location should you need one. In terms of procedural outcomes, uh, very high success rate, very low complication rate uh, in terms of needing to take the patient uh, to the OR after a common femoral and or profunda intervention. Um, the one thing that I want to mention here as well uh, is uh, the stent or not stent in terms of multivariate analysis. I think that Certainly, stenting uh, uh, compromises your long-term patency rate to some extent, but it is not to a greater uh, degree, as you see it by this and this table. But you know, if you wanna, if you. Uh, Try to get a long-term durability or necessarily uh, avoid a stenting would be the best way to do. Especially, you preserve the surgical options should the patient need it again, and certainly the access point of view should this patient require another procedure, uh, whether endo or coronary. Another study, again, discussing this, and I'm just going to go uh, quickly uh, to the findings given the time, uh, is the uh, high success rate, over 90%, consistent with the prior, and this is an American study. Uh, most of those patients require 
PTA as the main way of therapy in combination with endarthrectomy. Whether rotational or excisional atherectomy, it depends on the operators. It seems like excisional atherectomy is the one that most of the operators prefer. Um, one thing that is interesting about studies that include those patients that had complications for closure devices, so those that receive angiosil and even perclose, some of them are also were treated despite of having a mechanical object in that location with angioplasty, which, you know, may not be necessarily something that you would think of right away. As you see, you have a stitch or a collagen plug in there, should you even attempt it. Often those patients will be referred for an endarterectomy, but these guys show that it's doable to do this. Uh, these are all those patients that had vascular, uh, re vascular closure-related complications, and uh, most of them were adequately treated with a silver hawk and or uh, some other form of uh, atherectomy, and most of them did uh, okay in terms of uh, acute procedural result. Um, lastly, again, to show the, comp the combination of therapies, certainly angioplasty seems to be the preserved way to do it, avoiding stenting. Uh, therefore, atherectomy seems to be very commonly used. If you have to stent, again, uh, it compromises your future access point, and then it seems to increase somewhat your re stenosis rate. Most of the time, you will uh, perform single stent with provisional stenting of the branch. In other words, you would stent into the SFA and open the cells of the profunda by performing kissing and balloon angioplasty. The, combi the application of bifurcation stents uh, does seem like in the coronaries to increase your uh, re stenosis rate. And here is what I wanted to show you in terms of etiology. Uh, I mentioned the vascular, vascular closure device related complications versus atherosclerotic. In those patients that had femoral disease from vascular closure devices, it seems like they do it actually pretty well if you were to treat them endovascularly. Again, if there is a reason to do so, I, I don't advocate necessarily this to be your gold standard uh, of care. So no major randomized controlled clinical trials. I still think that surgery continues on the mainstay of therapy for these patients in terms of safety, long-term efficacy. Endo is a reasonable approach in some cases for in which uh, surgical uh, intervention is not adequate given the comorbidities of the patient and some other anatomic features. The profonda intervention uh, in the presence of severe SFA is an option uh, given the fact that it gives a significant amount of collaterals to the distal vessel as it reconstituted. With that, I finish. Thank you very much.